Well, Theo, you're very welcome to the programme. How are you? Hello, good, good. Good, good, good. Hertz, now you played earlier on, um, on the, in the tent stage earlier, whatever you call it. Yeah. Um, how was it? Fantastic. It's been uh, a long time since we've been here, a few years now, and we've been so excited today, and it was just everything we wanted. It was a fantastic crowd. And near the end of festival season, one more to go is Turkey next Friday. Will the weather be yeah. good? It's beautiful oh, out it's there, it's beautiful. That's the other thing, it's beautiful. It was lovely when we left London this morning, and we... Um, it was a bit of a quick turnaround. We had to run out of a car from the airport straight onto stage, but it was uh, it was a great welcome. Yeah. Very rock and roll. Oh, it wasn't a limo, was it? <laughs> no, it was a transit. <laughs> man. It wasn't. Now, okay, let's take a look at the the album Exile, right? Um, Elton John is on it first of all, which is um, he is. is that like you know he's a fan of yours or you're a fan of his? And hey, Elton, will you come on our album? It was sort of uh, we found out he was a fan a few years ago, and we um, I always remembered it obviously because it was a huge moment and it came round to it and I thought to myself I wonder if we could ask him for this song we had which already had a choir on it made of fans from around the world and it was already a special song I thought I wonder if we can ask and he was just so kind yeah and he was really forthcoming and and came to the studio and yeah we were very very lucky yeah and like obviously when, when people have two albums out people always ask this I'm gonna ask what's the difference in Hertz between album one and album two uh it's better it, well, it's it's just the next stage yeah. for us. Like we, the first album, we could never write another album like the first one. So we had to move forward as a band and try different things, try try and fill the gaps that were left by the first one. So um, yeah, it's more dynamic, it's more guitars, it's heavier in parts. So yeah, hopefully it shows people another side. And you, the, the the world is showing itself to you. Are you small village England or big town England? Small village. Small village England. I'm uh, from the north. I'm from North Yorkshire. Adam's from near Manchester. Right. And I'm um, from right in the middle of the countryside, the middle of nowhere. So what was the music like that you were listening to? Was it The Cure, Depeche Mode and The Smiths or was it Eminem or what was it? Yeah, it, what, it, weirdly, the first album I ever got was Eminem when I was 11 years old. First album I got bought, which is a So you're in a small village and you get a first album 11 years old yeah. and did it like do what people say in the 50s Elvis did to them, that kind of thing? It did. Well, my, my world was tiny. I lived in a small town yeah. and I had no outlet really and... When you're that age and you're growing up and you're a teenager, you an album like that and people like The Strokes and and things like that, all of a sudden you the world's a bigger place and it seems like there's a lot more possible. And so they're the bands and Libertines and stuff that made me want to be in a band, really. And would the attitude of the Libertines be part of it too, without going too overboard? Well, if the, the, the desire to make something special right. and the desire to be unique and to put effort into what you do. I think that's what we've always wanted to do, is be, not be like everybody else and strive to carve our own path, I think. Do you get blasé with the travel? I mean, like, you know, we're talking Germany and Russia and Iceland and all the rest, or do you yeah. always say, no, this is... Like, I mean, do you get to see anything? Well, they always say that's what you get paid for. Yeah. You get paid for the travel, not for the gigs. Yeah, But exactly. it's, um... We do, we've been lucky enough to go, I mean, we've been all around the world and we've, we make an, we endeavour to see things and to experience places and we've been lucky enough to go to places like Siberia and Indonesia and places where we pick bands, not only bands but people don't really travel to tourists and so we've seen some fantastic things, yeah. Well, it was, I think it was Charlie Watts from the Stones and then every second actor always says that, I get up there and I play for free, it's the hanging and bleeding round That's that drives me round the bend. But it always, it always is a... Um, that's the solace in it when you sat in an airport for five hours and yeah. you go, it's all right because yeah. this is. Yeah, and it's and not the flight's hard delayed work, by a day. So, yeah. yeah right. Just as a matter of fact, like, I mean, in terms of image, and image being as important as anything ever is, like David Bowie in the 70s, his platforms were as important as any B side he ever released, kind of thing. Um, you, would you ever go out in tracksuits? I mean, you're pretty, you're pretty smart dressers. You know? We uh, threw all of our other clothes out, <laughs> so we've got no choice now. Um, but yeah, we. Uh, it's part of the, it's part of who we are, and it, what, it, lucky enough, we're best friends, and it is what we've got the same taste in things, and it's always been the image of the band's always been a very important addition to the music. Yeah. I think I think they need each other, so yeah, it's something we we care about a lot. The, the, like Hertz were is it fair to say? Let's just call mainland Europe and then UK. You were definitely picked up bigger in mainland Europe than you were at home, weren't you? Yeah, the that first... can be a very good thing. It was fantastic for us. We we just made our music and places like Germany and Russia and Greece and all these places. All, all of a sudden, there was a huge spike of interest before anyone in England knew who we were or what we were doing. And and it gave us a great uh, pr pride for the, these places and a great relationship. And we've we go all over the place, Finland and 
yeah, it's uh, we're very, very lucky. When we meet bands who don't have that, I think we f we remember how lucky we are. And if you get somebody in the studio to stop the lot of you fighting, I mean, like, there's a Swedish producer you got, which is uh, Jonas Quant. Yeah. Now, is, is he there to kind of referee or say, listen, lads, you've done 94 takes, that's enough. Can we go on to the next one? Yeah, in a way, he is, yeah. His, his role in both of the records was to... We'll just push and add things and make things... We're sort of maximalists. <laughs> we make things sound as big as possible, and he's the restraint, and he, he's he got a great ear for pop and a great ear for sounds, and he reigns us in. That's what So he could I say in any way at all that he has a Scandinavian sensibility? And if I do, explain in 30 seconds what I might mean by that. Simplicity, elegance, uh, dedication, and artistry. That's the Swedish way, isn't it? And uh, health, and, and also, aside from beauty, health, and... Yeah, uh, and very expensive beer. Very expensive, <laughs> very expensive beer. <laughs> OK, well, look, one last one, because we did start this as that last track was playing there by you two. I just wanted to ask you a thing about... Uh, Bjork is playing later on, right? Yeah. And you do Army of Me in your... Se no, you have done... Yeah, we've been do we did it a few times this summer. She's, um... She's one of our favourite people ever, and we, um... We did it a few times. Just we 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 messed about with it in rehearsals, and we thought it was uh, thought it worked. But we so we'll do it. We do it every so often. But we're going to miss her tonight, which is I'm devastated about. And what is it finally about somebody like Bjork, and, and as regards Hertz as well? Because I mean, you know, is it the out thereness of her? It's the sheer lack of um, of not playing by any rules. Care of, no, of rule of of conformity, and yeah. it's she's carved her own path. And not only is she unique and has a unique vision. She's also incredibly talented musically, production-wise, lyrically, vocally, like, there's, she's a huge machine, and she, it's very difficult in the world where no one has even come close to copying her in, what, 20 years or something yeah. like that? No yeah. one even attempts no, to be like don't. Bjork. Yeah. And that's yeah. a great testament to her, I think. OK, by the way, one person I haven't asked about, and I can't believe it, speaking of unique, I mean, we know Cheryl Cole has a unique bottom these days, but uh, tell me about <laughs> Kylie. Is Kylie's bottom still working, yeah? It does, wait. It still works. It's, it, can stop, it can stop traffic. <laughs> you got Kylie. Did you ring her up and say, oh, we have this tract of ocean, let's do it? Yeah, we sent her an email. It wasn't as glamorous as a phone call, right. but we... Uh, she didn't do it down the line, did she? she was there, was no, she? No, she was there, yeah, yeah. Was she? she was she was the same, like, people, it's refreshing to know that people get to this position by anyone who's a star, like Elton or her, they're a star because well, they've you got... you hear them, it's Elton now. Get yeah, but they're a the star because they've got a good a good heart and they're kind and generous people and it's lovely to see that in the in the flesh, yeah. OK, well, look, I'll tell you what, we are live in the roadcaster at the Electric Picnic. We have Theo here from Hertz, but we're going to kick you out now because it's time for the news. So thank you very much, Theo, and good luck. By the way, you're, you're leaving here now shortly? Straight onto that plane. Aye, God, well, let's enjoy Turkey next Friday. Thank you very I much, I won't be guys. there. Good luck, thanks. Thank you, goodbye.